welcome back to another episode of the Dr. Supercoach podcast. You're on again this week with JB and we are again this week powered by Code Sports. Now, I have with me Mr. Pistol, um, who I think like a lot of us had one of those rounds this year where everything just happened to go wrong in at the exact same time and... It was, I don't know about you, I, I ended up turning a lot of games of football off because my player was either injured or just playing horribly or I had a rookie in the game that was going to score like a 30, but it was a frustrating week of football. It was not fun, but I'm glad it's over. Um, <laughs> I just like, I didn't realize so many people didn't captain English. I'm just used to everyone have captaining English and they've all shifted to Bont after his like last couple of weeks and I'm like... La, 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 la. I'm just going to captain English every week and then realize that in all my leagues, I was the only person to captain him. And I'm like, oh, no, this has gone so poorly for me. Well, I, I was going to captain him as a I, – I vice captained Clary and uh, I was convinced on English as the backup, just that it's a safe ton. Um, and then some people – I don't know. Uh, this is, these are things that I really need to. I used to look into this stuff really well for captaincy, um, and then I've sort of I've I've just not had the time this year, or I found it a bit difficult to to find the stats that I want. But Pitnet is actually a quite a restrictive ruckman um, with hitouts, and he showed it again. Um, so he obviously limited English's hitouts to advantage. A lot of people were onto that fact, and they went with Bond, even though I thought Bond would get tagged. Yeah. Um, at, by half time, I was looking at, at that going, you know, thank God I, I went with Oliver and not Bond because um, he was getting tagged as I thought, but he he just broke through it and eventually um, ended up with a, a, a manageable score. Like I think you only lost like 20 or 30 points there, so it's not the end of the world. But it Felt like um, a big 31. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's always tough captaining a sub ton. It is just impossible to look at your team – that week and, and see the 176 or whatever it yeah. comes up as. Um, very frustrating. <laughs> so bad. But how did you go? Uh, I did okay. I, I also copped some carnage watching both the lead and Jack still get subbed out in the same game was uh, incredible. Uh, what a feeling that was. <laughs> um, and both rested apparently, both potentially fine for this week. I know both of them were either struggling during the week or I had a knee knock in the game, uh, Jack Steele, but... Never enjoyable. And then besides that, it was – my top end was really good, but then I still had McKenna who scored 30. Um, I had Chincotta on field who scored 30. Um, just too many guys not doing enough. Um, and that I think the, the floor of my team fell out this week and I lost about 400 ranks, I think, to, to 5.5K. So um, it's it wasn't too bad. Damage control, not too bad. Oh, a hopper was the other one. Yeah, um, hopper. But it, ju- it just felt like nothing could go right this week. It was very frustrating to follow. Yeah, I, I only dropped 40 <coughs> spots, so I nearly got the coveted grey arrow, but um, sitting at 1,400th, um, yeah, just <laughs> I don't think my team's good enough to make it into the top 1K at the end of the season. It's it's really good right now, but I've exhausted all of my money. I am... I'm going to run on fumes until the end of the buyers and I need the mid-season draft to, to top up all of my rookies because I have nothing left in the tank right now. So I will enjoy my final good week this week, hopefully, fingers crossed, and then it's all downhill from there. Uh, I think you'll be surprised at the carnage that sort of plagues other teams. It's it's had its fair toll on your team yeah. so far. <laughs> I'm like looking at 13 um, trades left and I'm like, oh boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so eventually it just, it, it'll strike the odd player here or there that you don't own, hopefully, um, for your sake. Uh, and then you, you, ne- you never know, the, the competition has a way of evening out. So um, I wouldn't count myself out so far. That's anyone who thinks that they've, they've sort of just been struck by a lot of bad luck this year. Um, it finds a way to even out the competition. It always does. Uh, so don't don't give up. Don't give up on your season. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, I suppose it's, we're coming into a really interesting week because um, in terms of downgrade options, they're weird or expensive. Yeah. In terms of upgrade options, they're untrustworthy and cheap. And it's just, it's such a strange year of Supercoach. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, I, I'm just going to dive straight in uh, to the Patreon call-outs first. Um, Andrew Bailey is our only sign-up, so thank you very much, Bailey. 
Andrew. Um, he gets a soul a soul shout out pistol. Yeah. Do, you, do you have anything to say about Andrew? Seems like a good bloke. I think. Well, considering he's the only <laughs> one this week, we, we've got a little bit of time to uh, to spend on Andrew. Just a, a, a couple of words. That's a good time to get involved before the uh, launch of the Doctor Supercoach Cup, which will be spoken about more, I guess. As uh, well, <laughs> I haven't done the maths. I'm pretty sure I'm starting after the buys because there's that extra week. Um, yeah, but yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure. But it will be roughly around that time, around 14, 15, 16, something like that. We'll we'll talk about it more in the the next couple of weeks, but it's a good time to get involved before that anyway, just uh, in, in preparation of it. Was there anything for the Cancer Council this week? There was a donation from Azza, um, flat five for taking Jez Cameron and Drury over Goulden and Atkins. Early POD regret. That's that's just taking the PODs for the sake of taking the PODs, really. Yeah. That's, that. I mean, I appreciate Azza for the donation, Um but it's just a lesson learnt because often people come in to Slack or, or online and they're like, oh, I'm looking for a POD because everyone's got the same I team. hate that. So I, I need to get a POD. And then they do something like Jez Cameron over Goulden. And there's a reason why you know, Goulden coming off a 150 with a break even, what was it, like four or something? Yeah, um, yeah, it was like nine. It just... He looked really good. It was like kind of, well, I don't have him. I should get him before he skyrockets in price. And he put out another 150. I mean, there's no point. Now, now you're just behind. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, sorry, Az. Appreciate the uh, donation. Um, stick, stick to the tried and true premiums, which we'll discuss because well, all of them went well this week. Right, JB? I can't, no, not at all. <laughs> I kind of said that in my captain's video as well. You don't need to go. You don't need to go left field for your captaincy option. You just need to be the guy who hits his captain every single week, as in like you need to be the, the guy who just peppers the one fifteen to one forty every week. Um, people that shoot for the one fifties are going to hit their fair share of eighties and nineties, and, and it, it'll just not work out for them. Um, whereas if you just pepper that score. Um, the consistency will just carry you above the rest. And that's the same with the, the PODs. If you just keep hitting the correct players, whether they're highly owned or not, enough other people will start looking for PODs or they'll zig when they should zag. And this type of variance will catch up to them with their players. Don't let it be your players. Yep. Um, all right, so yes, rookie discussions um, is first. I'm going to start you off with the hard-hitting questions. We've got a Bailey Humphrey, 213K rookie, who's made 28K on the year, so he started elevated as it is. Uh, He's got 117 on the weekend. He has a half a game against Richmond, in which he was subbed out at halftime with a negative three just two weeks ago. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, So I'm confused as to, to where... I should sit with this. Um, the guy clearly has struggled in terms of um, points potential, yet he's put out a 117 against West Coast, which you know is, is probably one of the easiest teams to score against. Yep. Uh, sure. And now now has a tough run. Where do you sit on, on Humphrey? So for me, at this stage of the season, you're, if you don't have Hopper, you're in a position where you can just hold trades and you don't need to make a trade. If you have Hopper, though, you need, yep. you need to make a trade and you might not have any money in the bank, so you might be forced into a downgrade. So let's say you're in that situation. So you're forced into a downgrade and you're like, okay, these are all my options we're going to talk about that are just like thrown on the table and it's not a great bunch. Uh, some, some would say it's a terrible bunch and you need to pick one of them. And I think Humphrey... Because he has a negative 59 break even, back-to-back scores of 50 makes you 80K, which he might not he might not have back-to-back scores of 50, don't get me wrong, but I would rather take a rookie that's going to make 80K than looking at my bench where I've taken a half a dozen rookies who haven't made me 20K. So it's there's there's risk with whatever pick you take this week, but I like the one that has a negative 59 break even because... He still makes money if he scores negative three this week. So can I just Yeah, go for it. I kinda I kinda want to break this down a little bit. So he's only had he's only had the back to back fifties once, and that was to get the one the score this week after sixty four last week. Yeah. Before that he had the thirty nine, thirty eight, forty three, negative three. Now 
Um, I know he's had some sub-affected games. His points per minute are, are very good, um, uh, which is a stat that I think we, we do like paying attention to, yeah. especially for rookies. Um, when they've been sub a little bit, and you know you don't want to let those sub scores sort of dictate what you're what you're looking at, but I still think he's subbable. I still think he's manageable Absolutely. in game. Um, I, I know I'm, I'd probably put his job security up there with some of the better rookies that we've had this year. Yeah. Um, but back to back fifties, he could easily miss that by by twenty points per game in the next two. And only make you 60k and sort of just dwell, or even when the 117 drops out, lose a bit of money. It just Brisbane, Western Bulldogs, and Adelaide in his next three, followed by Carlton after that. Um, only, yeah, I just I find it really difficult to, to convince myself that he's going to keep doing 50 plus. He plays. What do you think of his role? Did you did you watch him play this week? I know a lot of people are saying that he got more. Um, wing or CBA time, yeah. um, more than zero, which he was previously getting. Um, is that enough to sort of make you convince you that he's going to have a high enough floor, even against the better teams? Yeah. So I mean, the, the run up ahead is really tough, and that's definitely something that you need to factor in. It's not like he's playing, you know, North Melbourne and all, and all that. So you feel confident about it. But at the end of the day, he also did score the sixty-four against Melbourne who are yep. meant to be hard. So if he can do that against Melbourne, it kind of lets you have a little bit of faith that he could potentially... They nearly won that game though, Gold Coast. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I mean, Gold Coast, it's it's the same as like any sort of rookie and team. The ones that like have high confidence seem to like play better. So if they're a team that thinks they can win, they might perform really well against Brisbane this week and then their players perform well, you know, like if Humphrey, if Humphrey's finished this game and he's like, I'm the best player in the league, he's going to go out there and try and play like it um, as well. So the confidence, you know, that form breeds, I guess, more form. And this is, it's the opposite of what I usually say, where like losing breeds losing or a losing mentality breeds a losing mentality. Um, so the, the opponent is hard, so I'm not really expecting the 100 plus scores, but I do think he can put up back to back 50s against these opponents. And at the end of the day, from this pick, I'm not... I'd, I mean, I'd love 150K from him, but I'm not expecting that. Like, my expectations are rock bottom. My expectations are 80K, which I feel like he can get. Um, I, I like his role in that the, the difference between the last, I guess, three games, because, I mean, he kind of had that role. <laughs> he wasn't far off the same role in round seven when he was subbed. To be fair, against he, Richmond, yeah. yeah, he did have some CBAs against Richmond, and it didn't help because he just he was in that awkward position where the he, the ball just kept getting kicked over his head, and he was he was just in the wrong place all the time um, against Richmond. But the last two weeks, he won. He had five CBAs um, against West Coast, which is good for role being around it. He's a big boy, like he's got a big body. He, I think, if he's in and around that area. Um, I think that that would look on paper like he is going to, you know, I mean, on paper, high draft pick, good good junior numbers, now is getting the right role, which he didn't really have earlier in the season. Like, it's all on paper adding up to it being a good pick. As you said, like, um, decent points per minute, but now he's actually getting the minutes, you know, in the first half, the first... You know, he had three games in a row under 70 minutes played. In the last two, he's had 100 minutes and 84 minutes. And whilst being on the ground doesn't guarantee you points, it's a pretty good measure of getting more points. We pick our breakout premiums by having, you know, 10 more minutes or five more minutes on field, and that equates to, you know, five more points per game. So if, if he's getting 20 minutes more on the, on the ground, you would hope he's going to be getting at least 10 points extra per game because of it. Um, not an exact science, but one I feel comfortable backing in because we've seen it time and time again, um, you know, pay off. So, yeah, I, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say I love the pick because it's just the best of a bad bunch and I don't like any of the picks. I thought you were going to just then so. say something positive about him, but <laughs> you, 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 all right, you're finishing on that. That's fine. I, 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 don't, um, I, don't, I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, I'm not going to try and sell you something that's not there. I think No, no, fine. I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about – we'll talk about we'll, – let's talk about everyone, <laughs> and then let's give our top three, okay? okay. 
All right, so th- some of these will be quicker than others. Aaron Francis um, scored 95 this week. Is about the same price as Bailey Humphrey, 215K. Um, with their injuries that they've had, he probably has a secure spot in the team. This is one of the games that I wasn't able to watch, so I don't know if he played defense yeah, or in played back. attack. Yeah, He played defense, yeah. nice. But he's going to play um, forward now probably because Logan McDonald's injured. Well, that's the thing, and I think we can probably start with that, is that his role itself not only within the best 22 um, when players start coming back, but as just a game-by-game basis, I think he's up in the air. Um, so I think he's extremely difficult to trade into and a, a worse option than Humphrey that we Agreed. probably don't need to go too far into. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Now, Arthur Jones scored 92 for the Bulldogs this week. Um, <laughs> I cannot believe we're talking about... Someone who had a 26, 28, 23, 33, and 42 to open the year, um, making a hole of 17K in his first seven games, <laughs> has now gone 65 and 92 um, to tack on an extra big bit of money on there and about 75K's worth on top. Now he's 215K with a tiny, tiny break even of, let me find that, negative, negative 34. Yeah, negative 34. So if he scores back-to-back 50s, um, he makes 60K. Now, is there a thought process behind this one? He's got Adelaide followed by Gold Coast before they versus Geelong and Port Adelaide. Yeah, and his job security is good as well. So I think people keep saying Bailey Humphrey's got good job security and that's a reason to pick him. And I understand the logic, but I'm thinking, well, at some stage you're going to trade him and it's probably you're going to get to like round 14. I, by that stage, you probably want to at minimum cash out or even beforehand, you probably cash out in two weeks to be honest. But I feel like Arthur Jones has got the round 15 by, you're probably cashing out well before that point. So if you're going purely on job security, it shouldn't rule out Jones. Um, I think what rules out Jones is just role wise. It's really it's small hard. forward. It's small forward. It's just really hard to score. Well, I mean, he's done it once ever. Um, and it just wasn't, I guess, as high ceiling as Humphrey, and they're the same price, so it's like a direct comparison. Um, so I just don't see the point in picking him over Humphrey. Again, I don't know. I can't believe we're talking about players like this. Mitchell Nevitt scored 71 this week. He's 207K. He's already risen 67K. Um, he played really well. He's a big-body midfielder, um, and... Knows how to find the footy, gets around sort of the edges of the pack and then has a bit of a run, carry, and um, has a really good leg on him as well. One that I'm actually a little bit upset that I missed last week for the elevated price, but back-to-back 70s now, his break-even is tiny, it's negative 25. Um, do we keep going back to this back-to-back 50 thing because he makes about 50K with that? What are, we, what are our thoughts here? I would not be surprised if he turned out to be much better than Humphrey. Um, it's just the job security side of it is he's still one really bad game probably away from being out of the side when they've got you know their players um, returning from injury and suspension. Yeah, it's he looks really good, big bodied winger, and he gets into the right spots and he looked like he could be a good super coach scorer. Like I didn't feel, I didn't feel like he was going to struggle to reach fifty. I felt like he was on track for a seventy like the whole game. I'm like, okay, this guy's getting seventy. Um, so and he's and he's got that around thirteen buy as well. So he's a really good alternative pick, I think. But the job security just worries me that it gets you know, for him to make a hundred k right now, he needs to play every game until his buy, and I can't guarantee that. So that's that's why I'm not going there. Harry Sharp for Brisbane is the next one. He has Gold Coast, Adelaide Hawks in his next three. Um, I suppose has to survive Daniel Rich coming back in a couple of weeks is the big thing. Um, but I, I think Sharp can be not their most at-risk player sometimes. Um, the way he played this week, he scored 68. Um, I think he can work his way to being the 21st or 20th player in that team. Um, depending on form, they might have other guys they want to sort of shuffle around. But essentially, that is the big danger. But he's actually... Uh, 123k um he's a rookie who hasn't risen in price at all yet and thus surely has less risk attached to him in terms of well making money um he just has to play the games that's right and he looks really good from this week 
Um, probably a bit fumbly in that that first game against Carlton, but this game he looks really solid. And as you said, it's way easier to make money from 123k than it is to make it from 215k. So if it's purely a money making pick, I think I would go with Sharp. It's just I really on the fence as if he's going to be able to outlast Rich or not. Oh, God. The names here are going to give me an aneurysm. Josh Weddle, who was already in elevated price last week, is further elevated this week. 168K, he scored 65 points with a goal, mind you. Um, now comes up against West Coast with a very low break even and another injury to their back line. Um, I think it was Blank that got subbed out. Um, 65 points on the weekend. Looked very good. Um, if, if I had seen that eye test leading in, this is what happens when you don't watch enough of the football. You go more on um, the facts and what you know about a player's job security, etc., uh, and less on the eye test, which I, with Weddle, that's why I went Atkins last week. Um, I'd seen him play. I knew the role was decent. Weddle, I hadn't seen him play yet. Having seen him play this week, he was much better than I expected. Um, he's got 15% ownership already, 168K. Is there validity to him this week? Yeah, I think he can still make 80 to 100K. It's, he's got West Coast, right? So he'd need to put out a big score this week, though. Um, what are you thinking, like 70 plus, do you think? Yeah, The I 38 think comes out of the three round now. Yeah, I think he's very capable of it. He looks like, you know, he keeps up, up on the wing, um, which is not a great super good scoring position, but... Um, it's one way you can at least pop a 70. I wouldn't, it's, I wouldn't it's like better it. than back pocket in terms of distribu- yeah. distribution. Like. Maybe not for Hawthorne. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but, and better than the forward pocket. But I, I liked what I saw. I thought he was really impressive. He's going to hold his spot, and it's more just about putting out a good score against West Coast. I, I would not be surprised if he also made, you know, was in the conversation of making 100K. If you can't afford Humphreys to get your upgrade target and – Rich is named and Sharp isn't or something like that. I think Weddle might be the next best thing. God, what a what a world we live in. Francis Evans, 144 Francis you Evans. You talk about it. I'm not even going to talk about this one. I, I'm not even going to talk about him either. 145K. He made 8K this week uh, with a 64. He had a 6 and a 27 before this because he's absolute sub fodder. Um was he sub in this game as well? He was, wasn't he? It's just that um, Marshall went out early with a concussion. Um, was it? I can't remember. I thought he maybe anyway, was sub, but yeah, I can't remember. <clears throat> anyway, he's not going to be... He's got Melbourne and Richmond in his next two, and he's either going to be sub or out of the team <laughs> or like soon out of the team. Do not consider Francis Evans, please. There we go. Um, I'll, I'll, let me just shut that down immediately. The next one, Thomas Berry for Gold Coast, scored 48 this week after 57 last week. Uh, He's the traditional 123K. He's a forward. Um, He actually looks okay. Uh, The problem is he doesn't really hit the scoreboard as a player who plays forward. Um, So I I think he's limited in his upside in in terms of potential points output. Yeah. Uh, and besides that, they've got a lot of players on the outer right now who are going to be re- returning in the next three, two, three weeks. Um, so I do really worry about his job security more than anything. In fact, he could go out this week. Yeah, I think he's probably up for Holman or Ainsworth anyway. So it's not, I, I wouldn't consider him because the job security is just too poor. Jack Bytel is Gosh. the next guy on this long, illustrious list of unbelievable players I never thought I'd be discussing. We skipped Cadman. <laughs> Do you, you know what? You talk about Cadman because you mentioned him before. Um, go, I, go I, for, I just go think it's Cadman. a first-round draft pick who's now, well, number one pick, but who's dropped from a starting price of 200K down to 154K because he's scoring so poorly. I mean, as a key forward... That makes him an option to you? No, it just means that if you're desperate and we can keep an eye out on him for the next couple of weeks because if he's going to get low enough, it just he doesn't kick goals. Like, if he kicks goals, he'll score more than 15 points a game. He's had two 15-pointers. Um, so, and it's not like he's not capable of kicking goals either. He's, like, clearly going to be talented. I just think if you, if you pick someone who's going to be playing through the bye and you need those extra 15 points a week... You might want to consider him. Similar to Bytel, to be honest. 
Well, Bytel's scores read really, really interestingly. He had a 71 against Fremantle in round one, then didn't return until round four, in which he was sub. He then scored 10 against Gold Coast, 14 against Collingwood, eight against North Melbourne, and this week a whopping 16 against Adelaide. Now, I understand he's been sub every week. If he does come back into the team, um, there's a good chance that that 71 is closer to the norm. Um, I actually do think he's closer to a... 60 plus average due to his um, role in the team and, and where he plays, where he's good. However, he is clearly the 23rd person on the list. Um, even with a couple of injuries, he's. I think they enjoy what he offers coming on as sub. Um, God, I would not trust him to stay in the side for, for long enough to make money. Um, and as soon as he's made some money, you need to trade him because he's going to lose the money because he's going to be sub again. Yeah. So it's just way too difficult to back that in. No, oh, I think I would try and hold off for the mid-season draft and pick some of those guys up at the same, you know, 102K price. I think that's where my eye is going. Um, all right, so Drury is the next one. I'm Blake Drury, more. who we thought was going to be our lord and saviour um, yep. with the 51 against St. Kilda. It looked okay. Um, played forward line. And then 17 against Port is, I think... Much, much closer to what we can expect going forward. He's got Sydney, Collingwood, Essendon in the next three. Um, none of those are easy games. Um, no game on the fixture, I think, is easy for North Melbourne. <laughs> round 18, they have Hawthorne again, um, which that could be the interesting one. And then round 20, they have West Coast. So Drury could score well against those two teams. However, he is likely not going to be in the side. I think he probably plays again this week because they have like 39 injuries. Yep. Um, but if they didn't have exactly 39 plus injuries, um, he I think he would be dropped this week. Uh, he was just unfortunately nowhere near on the weekend. Um, and it's not his fault. He, he has the talent. I'm not trying to rag on him, but um, the ball just doesn't go down there enough. Um, North Melbourne unfortunately just aren't good enough um, to be competitive for a player like Drury to do well. And now losing LDU, it's just it's it sucks at the moment for North Melbourne, and it's not going to be any better for your, your forward pockets that play for North Melbourne. Phoenix Spice, the other one, scored twenty three in almost the full game. So, well, Spice stays up in the forward line. At least Drury was sighted at the defensive fifty. He just couldn't get anywhere near it. <laughs> and when he did, it was oh, yeah, either it was a turnover yeah. or a clanger. Or it's, it, look, did it's you see unfortunate. How many teams is in. He's in 32.8% of teams. Yeah, a lot. I think a lot of people still started him. Um, but he went up does, 18% ownership last week. Oh, did a lot of people jump on it early, did they? 18% after one game. I mean, his break even is negative 10. He's going to make a, a, I mean, a small I bit did. of money, but <laughs> look, you just, I know you did. Um, you cannot trade him in this week, I don't think. I think it's, it's far too difficult. What to, happens if it gets you Oliver? And otherwise, you can't you 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 can't get any good players. Um, <laughs> don't get any good players. Ooh. I feel like you needed me here last week for this advice. No, I um, still get Oliver. Cash generation is not good enough. Um, and Oliver's not. He might moving. play. When if he puts out a fifty against once, then yeah, you're Oliver's, in the money. Oliver is not moving rapidly to a point where you need to sell everything to get him this week. Yeah, that's more of a Dawson can, thing. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, True, I'm truly, <laughs> truly was. Um, but no, Dawson drops for the next couple of weeks. But yeah, um, no, no one in the game is, is staying out, out of your reach for that long. Um, just be a bit more patient, I think. Pistol, I'm talking to you. Yeah. This is outside of the viewership. Pistol, please just be a bit bit more patient. That's, that's fine. Um, last one. Last There's one. more? We're, we're at... Players that scored 17 points. I know. I missed one. Will Gould. Oh, okay. 141K. Um, he was subbing that first week for a 39, potentially subbing that second one against Geelong for a 25. Um, uh, I think he was actually named this week, was he, for a 46 against yeah, Geelong? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Fremantle. That is what happened, yeah. Um, and then obviously they've got so many injuries that against North, Carlton, St. Kilda, um, we expect him to stay in the team. Will he stay beyond that? Not sure. Is the scoring potential there enough? Not sure. He's 141K. What do you What do you reckon there? I don't actually think he stays in the team, to be honest. Oh, he was right. really not good. And 
That's not good. No, I mean, look, Rampy and McCartan, Tom should be back in the next two, three weeks. So I think what Will Gould doesn't outlast. And I think Melican's fit this week as well. So, so okay. Gould might come out and Melican straight in. That, that's enough for me. Um, all right, so now we've got to rank them. So I want oh, your top three sure. in order, please. All right. One, Humphrey. Two, I guess, Weddle. And three, Sharp. Wow. Okay. I'm going one, Sharp. All right. Two, Humphrey. Three, Weddle. Well, it's not that much of a wow. We just swapped one player around. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow, that's uh, fallen off my chair. Yep, okay, I'm glad we got that. Was, that can't, was a huge build up. That was like a 20 minute build up for the same. Can't believe right, your great. rankings, Pistol. That's, uh, all right, let's is, do all the other oof. players in the game now. Oh my god! Okay, so we actually are just going to go straight into the fallen premiums fallen. right after this break. Okay, so we're going to get into some guys who have uh, lost some currency in the game. Um, essentially, I think this is the hardest place to shop, um, but people are realizing that they probably don't have a choice but to um, spend down on on a, at least one or two of their midfield premiums. And at the very least, we're spoiled for choice. It's not like other years where there's like 10, 12 players, 600K that we're all trying to get in. Uh, how many how many pure midfielders are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are 600K right now. Um, and even those of those seven, I would say like a Noah Anderson, eh. Caleb Sarong, I'm, uh, I'm not completely sold on. He's like, good. there are still, there, he's pretty good, but like for a 600k guy, we we always thought we were getting like pure roll gold guarantees. Um, like uh, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's harsh, but it just feels like this year the pool of players in the midfield feels absolutely awful um and i have very little confidence in anyone um recommendations wise or buy wise um as in purchase wise but it's it's just a a minefield and we're going to try and get through it so i just want you to tell me we're going to actually do this pretty quickly i want to know who's real um and i want to know who you at least want to see more time from and that could be an extra week extra two weeks it could be until you see their role improve um, and then we know that they're, they're good to go from there sort of thing. I just want to know sort of just a little bit of like a, not even 30 seconds insight into the guys that I'm going to yell out. Okay. Okay. Does that suit you? Yes. Is it just mids or is it other fallen premiums from any other position? No, I'm going to focus on midfielders um, at the moment and then um, we might throw out another a couple of random names later, but um, I think midfield is the main part where people are looking to upgrade now. Yeah. Um, or now or in future, um, but I think people have a lot of midfield slots, whereas like we've got the Jack Siebels, the Will Days, the Sheezels, the those types of guys covering a few lines where we could just be like, uh, we could probably pick off people here or there, Gordons, which are, anyways. Um, in the midfield, so let me start. Sub 600K is where I'm starting. F- f- for the starters, it pains me to read this name out. Rory Laird. He's real. He's real? He's real. That's good. He was subbed out this week. He has a three-round average of 100 flat. He's been subbed out twice um, of the last three. No. No, just once. Well, fine. He he was tactically sat on the bench meaning to be subbed, and then the game was catching up faster, and they were like, oh, we'll, we'll probably need to get him back on there. But he spent a considerable amount of time in anticipation of being subbed. So it's not really fair. But yeah. 100 flat, 102 and then 98 are his last three scores. Like Before that, he, he was good, but he had a 50 against GWS and 97 against Fremantle. Um, he's only had three scores above 120 this year. I just want to make sure he's real. So if you're saying real, real, that's good. Um, I have Laird still. I have confidence in Laird still. I think he's real, but he's really testing the faith at the moment. Um, he needs this I, I just, break. He needs to get to this one yeah. week off. He needs to get to the buy desperately, I think. Yeah. Um, so they've got Bulldogs, Brisbane, Gold Coast, West Coast before the buy. Um, so hopefully he can get a run of form in those last couple of weeks. I think um, after hopefully he doesn't week, miss a week before then. He might be a buy, like as in buy him, not a not a super coach buy. 
a purchasable player. Yes. yes. Um, so his break even at the moment is only 139, which I say only, but he's very capable. But um, if he goes 110 ish, that resets down to about 120 yeah, break even. So uh, and yeah. we know any given week, yeah, he can get. Then against Gold Coast and West Coast, we probably expect him to. Uh, to get back up to the 600k range um, by that point. So, yeah, I think if you don't have him, he's coming up to a very good period where you can purchase him. Took Miller is the next one. And I know this guy's out for a while, but I, I need to know if we should be waiting on him. Um, he is going to get as cheap as it gets. Uh, he's 170 break even right now. Um, when he returns, if he gets a couple of tons, he, he drops something like 60k in the first couple of weeks on return, uh, closer to about 530k. I don't know if he'll return in time for us to have, you know, still a slot for him. Looking at my bench, yeah. probably will work for me. <laughs> I'll only be doing that last upgrade in 12 weeks' time. Um, but I, I think he's real. I mean, I traded him in the first place. so I, I think I the problem's going to be is that he's got three weeks before he's probably fit and yeah. then he's got the buy and then he's got two weeks of losing money against Carlton and Hawthorne. And you could get him after the first week of losing money, really, but um, you at least want to have him shed that first 30K plus um, out of his salary. So uh, it's going to be a really tough week to upgrade to him when he does that, do it. But if he comes back a little bit early, maybe the game before the buy, um, yeah, he, he could become a real option. And just to be sure, he is actually real. I think he is for sure. Yep. Um, Josh Kelly's the next one. Josh Kelly so, was real. He's never he's never not been real this whole season. Yeah. I just wanted to remind people. So he's had three scores in the 80s. He's had 80, 80, and 88. Every other score has been good. I just wanted to remind people um, his break even is down to 88. He's actually one of the only guys that I do really trust at this sub 600K price range who isn't injured. <laughs> what a sentence. <laughs> I know. Um, he's made exactly $2,000 on the year so far. So he's pretty much where we thought he was, where we know he was at the start of the year when we said he was extremely good value. So Round 15 um, by makes some fake. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't help, but if you if you are for some reason somehow good in that buy, I think he's very, very good. Um, I don't think we need to mention Crips uh, or Dangerfield. Lockie Neal's the next one, 574K. This guy is confusing. He's got a break even of 155, so not a purchase this week, despite having a 10% chance to hit that, apparently. Um, he's probably going to drop another 20, 15, 20K to about 550, um, a little bit over that. But he's had scores now of 95 in round one. Um, let me just say, he's only had one score over 125 and two scores over 120. And three scores over 115. And, yeah. Three scores over 110. Yeah, three over 110 is not good. That's really, really unlike him and really bad. Yeah, he's real. <laughs> he's, real as in... All right, so now we have to define what real is because now I'm confused. <laughs> no, I think, I think like you're buying him... He's not going to go worse, right? Like, he can't. He can't What's go a worse. real average? 110 plus? Yeah, I think I think one one ten is is probably a real for Lockie real. Neal. Okay, I I think he'll go, I think he'll go one ten plus. I get that he's like been terrible this whole season, but he's still averaging one hundred and seven, and I know it's because there's a massive one seventy six, but he has that in him um, to do that on any given week. Without I, that one seventy six against North. It is a very, very like. It is hard to look but at. But if you have to pick somebody at that price, I'm probably like not this week, but next week. If you're paying, if you're paying five fifty for somebody, like let it be Neil. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. Rather than take a pun on like Jack Steele or Andy Brayshaw or whatever. Like you're hoping whoa, whoa, best spoilers. case. We're getting to those. Well, you're hoping best case to get the one ten out of Brayshaw, but you may as well like. I I feel like I'm just may as well take Neil. All right, so for clarity's sake, real is 110 plus from now on. Okay. And that's you've, you've given that to Laird, Took, Josh Kelly, and Neil so far. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, can we tick Tom Green off in the same category just while we're here? I don't think it needs much discussion. Doesn't. Good. Okay. Was that a question? <laughs> no, or? no, that was a statement. I'm taking it as a statement. 
Uh, Darcy Parrish is set to miss probably too much time to overly consider. Um, if he does come back earlier, is he real or fake? I think I think he's fake. Yeah, I think he's too injury prone. I don't even think he gets the games played qualify for the one ten average that we're somehow throwing in as a rule now. But okay, yeah, um, I was going to say that was not a rule three <laughs> minutes ago. But sure, I, I make things up as I go. We know this. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I th- I think he's a must. I think he's in a void for the rest of the season. Yep. Um, Zach Merritt. Now, <laughs> he was the guy that I had confidence in. Um, he started forward and only had like their third most CBAs without Parrish in the team. Yeah, um, so I watched his first half and he was on 69 and a half time. And I was like, all right, I can't watch this. I didn't own him. I wanted to get him. And I I'm not going to be able to afford him now, blah, 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 blah. Turned it off. And then he ends up on 95 and he apparently had zero, zero CBAs in the last quarter. And his break even's one twenty. He's five hundred sixty four k. Is he real or fake pistol? This is the hardest one. No, so he's far. real. He's real. I he's say he's one ten purely because of fixtures. Like I, I think Richmond, like, West Coast, North Carlton. They versus West Coast twice, North twice for the rest of the season. That's a quarter of the remaining fixtures. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. No, I agree. I'm reading it. My I'm drooling a little bit. The, I think the funny thing is he actually versus West Coast, then North Melbourne. Yeah. Twice, like that that pocket of two games right there, um, is VCable. Um, so yeah, no, okay, I, I I do see that the fixtures are good enough. So we're saying real for Zach Merritt. That is good because I might be looking at him. I week. think only because of the fixtures, not because we've got any trust in the coach whatsoever. I just they were winning at half time when he was in the midfield, and then they lost the game when he wasn't in the midfield. <laughs> you know? Is there any point me saying Jack McRae? Ah, uh, he's fake at this point in time, though. No. Yeah, he he's fake. Even with a role change, I, I still status. struggle to believe in him. Yeah, even with forward status, I struggle. Um, he, last three scores, 96, 88, 81. Um, with forward status, I'm still not purchasing him yep. at that role. Um, Andrew Brayshaw, real or fake? Remember, this is talking a, a 110 plus average. I, I think he's fake for 110. Very, I think he's fake, yeah, for but sure. But I do think he'll go like 107. I think he goes maybe 105, if that. Yeah. That's that's with a couple of spike scores. Yeah, he can do that. It makes sense. It's not, good. it's not very good, though. No, I mean, that's why I said fake. Okay, good. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting testy in the studio. <laughs> um, Jack Steele, real or fake? Very fake. Uh, I hate to say it because I've got him, but I think he's fake as well, and I hate it. There's just too much going on with his body that I can't try... The reason I didn't want to get him was because I was worried that shoulder was one thing away, and it's, it's it's always something right now. Like now it's his knee, and then what what's going to be next time? Like he's just so battered and bruised and banged up that he's got the scoring potential and he's got the role, but his body, I I just I don't know how he's going to make it through the rest of the season and them not manage him at all, especially before finals, which I think St Kilda will play probably maybe. Not sure uh, now. I, I'm not certain. They've overachieved so far, but I, I do hope they They've do. They've got I a great they draw it, but... coming up. Do they? Yeah, so they, they as should... As good as Essendon's? I mean, GWS, Hawthorne, Swans, Richmond. It's not not the best, but it's not the worst. They're definitely good <laughs> two games. <laughs> they play West Coast and North again, that, and Hawthorne, and Hawthorne twice. So, you know, they've got four wins in there. That's, I mean, that's they, might, nice. they should make finals then. Um, with four more wins and and or five more wins, actually it's an extra game this year. I don't know, but five more wins probably does it. And surely they need to like he can't go into the last two games are against Geelong and Brisbane, like twenty three and twenty four. I don't know if they're going to be desperately trying to win those effects. Safe he, he's only had one ton this year. Like it, it is a shorter conversation than what we're even giving it credit yeah, for okay. right now. No. Yep, um, right. Okay, now I'm having a bit of a scroll. Uh, I'm trying to find Jordan Degoe. Yeah. Real or fake? He's fake for 110, but he's, he's real value. <laughs> um, his last two weeks were real bad, yep. um, but before that he was real. Um, and then against GWS now he has got 128, which is good. Um, look, I think, yeah, he, I, I don't even think he's the best value at his price, but I think he's good enough that if you've got him at the moment, 
like you don't care to move him until maybe he's by. Yeah, that's, um, that's after it. he versus North and West Coast back to back, and <laughs> another team that versus Melbourne. North and West Coast back to back. I know how lucky. Um, so yeah, after he has, he has Carlton, North West Coast, then Melbourne. So the Melbourne game might be the the thing that sort of stunts his his break even. Maybe he's five fifty at that point, and you can look at maybe sidewaysing him. Um, but besides that, I think he's a happy own, but. I wouldn't be buying. Um, LDU, real or fake, 497K with a break even of 103. I, I actually think he's real. His body's just so banged up and it, broken. It's falling apart. It's falling it, that, apart. That hamstring might be a three to four Look weaker. Bad. Like, it looks really, really bad. Um, I hope it's just a two weeker because he will be on my radar to get in. At this price, I or mean, maybe after one week of coming back, but yeah, his he, body's he as banged good. up as Jack Steele's, but I still feel like his scoring potential would be better. So he's I he's had more than like one ton him. this year, so yeah, I, I I like LDU. I think he, I would be looking at him after his round fifteen buy. I think last but not least, Callum Mills, um, break even one sixty four. Calf injury could be one week, two weeks. Um, three weeks, zero weeks. Um, did score 100 in the midfield against Collingwood. Did look to get that roll back. Um, and then, might do miss... you know where he started before he got injured two minutes into I the don't, game? I On don't. On the actually. wing. Did he? That's it's fake. Awful. Uh, awful. Callum Mills' owners, are, obviously, they got a price drop, so that's very unfortunate. But they, they're going to come out ahead after this because they would have been stuck with a fake premium for the entire season. He's so, going to be potentially like uh, he's going to be around 400k flat. Yeah, and I'm going to get him <laughs> with like some of the, some of the best uh, like ceiling of any player in the game still if he he, if, if he gets the role but a good loophole M9. Yeah, okay. Like so that that's what we're M9. looking for. So he's a real M9 option, but he's a fake premium option. Yeah, I think his ceiling is what gets it for me. I just I I don't think I thought that Collingwood game plan was a specific game plan against Collingwood. It wasn't like showing their future movements for the rest of the season. Um, it was yep. just that one week aberration, and I think he probably wasn't going to be going well for the whole year um, after that. So if you trade him in, you're probably going to be copping it every week, and now you get to trade him out, and good on you, I guess. All right, should I go through a couple of forward slash mid? Uh, sorry, forward slash defenders um, at cheapish prices, do we think? Yeah, but so we've got to change this, this real and fake scenarios because I'm not sure any of them are hitting 110. No, okay. Well, <laughs> let's just say 100 plus for these guys. Oof. Is that... <laughs> we, we don't think 100 plus. There's 95. a lot of players going 100 going plus. No, no, I'm going 100 plus. Oh my God, okay. I want them to be real. All right. Or, or fake. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So at the price, I'm going to start with Errol Goulden. Real or fake? 559K. Oh, okay. okay. It's a great he, question. He, he's still a price. I mean, he's real for right now. Um, you think he won't be eventually? No, I think I think he's good enough to be real forever. But I also think that there is an opportunity if you have players in your midfield that don't belong in the midfield, such as maybe Walsh if he gets forward status and you've already got a field forward line and Goulden gets to, which he definitely will get over 600K, but how much more than 600K will probably depend on how he scores against North Melbourne. Um, there would potentially be an opportunity to trade Goulden out at like 650K, which I think would be overs on what I expect in the average for the rest of the season and get you know, like a, a Dawson or an Oliver if you don't have them already. I think that would be like a shrewd sort of play. What if, okay, what if you don't have Walsh and in two weeks' time they're the same price? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean... No, I'm saying for that for that swap, even if you don't have wrong players in wrong positions, but Walsh gets forward status and you <laughs> literally just have Gordon and not Walsh. I probably, I probably would take Walsh, I think. It's yeah, hard I'll put you on the spot. There. Yeah, because you don't you don't ever want to trade out a guy that's like scoring super super well, right? But like, I I I still believe he's like a max one hundred five guy. 
I would. I think I'd rather. I know he's going to get to that price, but I. Th- I think I would rather keep him and try. If if I was going to get a uh, Walsh or something, if Walsh they is were a one fifteen. Right? No, I agree. But I think I would not. rather. I think I would rather trade someone like Sheasel instead of someone like okay. Golden. Yeah, that's fair. Because Golden right now he he's going he's going one hundred eight on the season. Yeah. Um. He's had one bad game for the entire year for a forward. One. In in the nine matches, only one below eighty five, and only two sorry, only three below one hundred. That's insane. Um, c- clearly, with one of the better ceilings in the entire game, um, has clearly found his role in the last two weeks. Yeah, I, I he's not the guy I want to move. I know he's going to be overpriced in exactly one week's time, um, but still underpriced on what I got him, and uh, I, I just don't think I want to cash it. But we'll, it'll be a discussion next week. I mean, they play West Coast in round fifteen, so you wouldn't do it until then anyway. And then you'd look, then you'd consider it. I think after that, when they got too long. Yep. Where he scored yep, his yep. worst game. <laughs> yeah, naturally. Uh, okay, James Sicily. No, he's, three, he's if, super real. He's got a three-round average of 108, yep. um, which includes a 63. <laughs> I'm really upset that I went Sinclair over him a couple of weeks back. Yeah, I think he's really, really real. I think he's 105 plus still. Yep, easy. Okay. Um, let's have a look here. Those were the guys I was prepared for. I said, were they for. value? I didn't feel like those were the value picks. So they're the, I said Errol Gordon and Sicily are probably like the, they're the 11th and 12th highest priced players in their positions, but still not highly priced enough to say they're not value. Can I yell Sicily 546K when he started at 630K is value still. I'm yelling some back at you if that's okay. Okay, well, can I... Are you going to okay. jump in or should I keep going? No, I'm going to jump in. Um, oh, go for it. Jeremy Cameron. Well, he's definitely not value. Well, after this week. Is he? He'll, he'll be about 480K after this week. Oh, my days. With a good buy. Mm, three sub tons in a row. No, I... Th- uh, I'm <laughs> they're pretty... They're 80s. Fake. It's not like they're 40s. <clears throat> and no, I'm, st- I'm starting to think he's fake. Okay. No, it's interesting. I, 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 I could I, be persuaded. I I only think that because I don't think if he if he played on a team like Gold Coast, he would be real. <laughs> like GWS, for example. <laughs> um but if he playing with a, a player like Hawkins, playing with uh, in a team like Geelong, I think that's kind of what makes him fake. He's still gonna have the high ceiling, but he's not relied upon like Buddy was, you know, all those years ago, like players have been in bad teams um, when they're one of the best players in the comp. I just don't think he... I don't think they need him to turn up every game. So I think that kind of makes him fake. Fair enough. I, I think he could potentially be real. Um, there's a, just a lot of home games. At, you know, you, you can just that see... That does help. The... the Cardinia Park games in round, what is it, 15, 17, 18, 20, 21. And 11. And, uh, it's got 11, yeah, and 24. And 24. Well. There's just a lot yeah. of them left. So he could be the guy. He could definitely be the guy. Um, he averages 106 against GWS, by the way, in his one game. Well, there we go. He's, he's, he's real. Fun fact. <laughs> um, what about Darcy Cameron? Darcy Cameron, oh, if you asked me this before Mason Cox's like career-defining breakout game last week, Cox I would have said real. Please, I've, I've told you so many times on the podcast, you are so banned from oh. mentioning his name. Um, right. <laughs> that's I, I, did, I didn't realize. Till, like, I was like, oh, Every, yeah, okay, everybody gets it. one. Yep. Uh, that was it. Uh, so Darcy Cameron, yeah, I, I think I think probably real still. I think he scores enough in the forward line to to still be real. A hundred plus, yeah, I think he's real. I think he's real. I think this week everyone wants to get him because he's low break even, but I feel like you'll be able to get him at five hundred k again just because I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was an early sub out candidate just to rest him. Um, you know, if when Collingwood, if we get a bit of a lead. We'll probably be able to rest him a little bit in the games against North Melbourne and West Coast. Um, 
given Cox's dominance. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not like rushing to get him, but he will be good for the rest of the season, I think. Like re- real across the season. All right. I've got one other really cheap player that I want to discuss, but otherwise you can jump back into it. Um, Redmond, 430k. Oh lord, I I think fake. I this is like for the for the price. It's four forty. Um, oh, he, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's never going to be bad for the price, but I think fake. I think everyone in that Essendon backline fake and just fake going forward. And I think everyone in that Essendon team is almost fake, besides maybe Zeret. <laughs> Zeret might it. be fake. <laughs> he he might be fake just just by association. Um, no, I find them impossible to to invest into in, in terms of super coach. Um, I just don't think they they do enough of the chippy chip. I don't think they do enough of the winny win. Um, yeah, I don't think they had enough buy at Essendon. Fair enough. Fake, I I, fake, I was fake, definitely fake. more interested when I thought he was going to get to four hundred k before he put out a one thirty six. Um, I'd mentioned to a couple of people oh, I might get him at four hundred k for Stocker and just ride that wave to the buy, but. Um, don't think I'm going to be doing that now for 40k. He just went big a little bit too early. I, I think he's a between. I, I think he can average around 95, which is good. Makes him good value when he's you know priced at 85. Yeah. In, uh, no, I don't think so. You think he'll fall short, like between 90 and 95. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think he's between 85 and 93. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's um, lower than I expected. Sh- I thought you were going to say enough. 90 to 95. All right, last three weeks, 106, 102, 99. Lockie Whitfield, real or fake? <laughs> he was really good against Collingwood, but we don't defend. He's had three good well. games in a row. Nah, it's, uh, it's, it's fake for me. I've got my draft team. That's enough. What do you need to see? Do you need to see like a 130, like vintage Whitfield? I Does need to think see he like might a, ever be real again. I think for me, it's the marks. Like, he was getting, like, 12, you know, 11, 12, 12 marks per game. And it, yeah. it was propping yeah. up his super coach and dream team scores to, like, ridiculous heights. Um, yep. I, I, he was good, but, I mean, his, his stat line is fantastic. But it's against Collingwood. We just saw what happened with Swans, you know, where they all scored super well against Collingwood, dream team and wise like that. Um, I'm not sure... It's yeah, it's a game style thing against Collingwood. It's it's too hard to read into. If I look at his marks throughout the season, like he's okay. His last three has been eight, ten, seven. It maybe fills one more or two more of each. I'd probably be more interested, to be honest. I've I've got one more for you. Yep. Let let me put this at a ninety five average. Okay. Will day real or fake? I think he is. That's a hard one. I know. I, th- I think he's real at 95, but I don't think he's real at 100. No, I don't think he's real at 100. I think it, against West Coast, maybe Gold Coast, North, he he has to do enough in those three games yep. to carry the rest of their fixtures. The rest of their fixtures aren't easy, by the way. No, they're hard. Saints, Port, Brisbane, Carlton, GWS, Richmond, St. Kilda, Collingwood, Bulldogs, Melbourne, Fremantle. There's like maybe three 50-50s, like not, not even 50-50s, like three competitives for two and a half quarters in there. And then like the rest are going to be grim like i know they'll they'll string together they'll they'll pinch a win from someone and look really good but if you were tipping the rest of their season they've got maybe two wins and then maybe like three other halves that they even get close i think and that's bad he, he yeah. needs to be winning to score points he think, has to be our original eye test was saying we were worried about him being a full-time midfielder because we didn't know if he would be able to like withstand it and that whilst- wasn't my eye test by the way or well, whatever, my eye test, I don't, I don't mind because I think it's true still. <laughs> me. Um, he plays three good quarters every game and he like looks really good and he passes the eye test with flying colours and he just struggles to play four really good quarters. So he always, so the last two why? games he's ended up in the 80s. Probably for it's, his- it's, it's for more reasons than just being able to run through it. It's because Hawthorne play two good quarters maybe. 
like two competitive enough quarters yeah. to the best of their ability before they get blown out. And and in blowouts, he just can't get the footy. Like the whole midfield slows down, the ruck slows down, they slow down in front of the ball, behind the ball. It just it's going to be a real struggle for Hawks and Will Day this year. Um, but in f- going forward, like if you can have his points <laughs> from next year, the year after when the Hawthorns start getting good, then you've got yourself a premium. My, it's just this year, I think it's going to be tough. For my them. brother-in-law, Jason's going to be mad if I don't correct you about Hawthorne's midfield because they keep, except for Melbourne, they pretty much win the clearances in, and uh, contested possessions every week of the season. But it's just the rest of the team is so dysfunctional. So they still get first use of the ball. They just have Warple kicking it, and that's never a positive thing. <laughs> Regardless of whether they're getting <laughs> first use or not, the the opposition team is getting first look at the goals. Yeah. Um, and and that is hurting Will Day the most. I, the well, fact that they can't stay in games. Is he gonna be in the future though? Unbelievable. I I love Will Day. He's I loved be him. So good. Yeah, for, from about two seasons ago. I enjoyed watching him on a him wing and, and thought he'd be a midfielder. Him and Holmes are like my two upcoming guys that I really like watching. <clears throat> They're both great. Get them in your keeper leagues, guys. Keeper leagues. Absolutely. Get on the lookout. All They're right. Both great. We've got one more quick discussion. Do we have one more quick discussion? Do we want to talk about money making ideas? Or well, we just mentioned the world Gould one, unless you have another money making idea up your sleeve, a Matt Kennedy type. Not really. I, I suppose I just want to talk about like, is there any validity in getting like a, a, um, a Tom Atkins or something like that after a couple of big scores? Like a la Tex Walker a few years ago when he started the season really well. Should we be looking for more for those 300K guys who get a bit of a role change and get on a roll, or are we still just looking for traditional rookies, do you think? If if Lloyd Meek, who's put out back-to-back 110s, if Reeves was confirmed out for like three weeks, just three weeks, I probably would go and take Meek purely because they play they they play teams that are the easiest to score against in the ruck in a row, West Coast, St Kilda, and Port. Um and if he's if he has five games of one ten in a row, it's going to be above five hundred k. He probably makes more money than all the rookies we spoke about earlier. So, unfortunately, I think Reeves is probably back this week, so it's going to be a no go. But it would have been fun. No, I agree. But those are the left field options. I think we do have to look at. But above all, I think just continuing to do what we just did and go through each option and say real or fake, real or fake, real or fake. Um, I think it's going to be super, super important. And, and it might change week by week, but you just you just have to keep looking. And when a real option pops up for cheap enough, that's when you have to pounce. And then just the big boys are going to essentially hover. I think like players like Calais and Oliver, they're going to go up, they're going to go down. It's going to look like they're unattainable. Then they're going to be attainable. Just like Jordan Dawson has done. I didn't think he put out a bad score for the rest of the year, but you know he just did. He's going to be somewhat attainable in a couple of weeks' time. Um, that's going to keep happening. That is a constant in this game. Um, the thing that changes is players that get cheap enough um, that you can actually trust, and th- those players end up ballooning back up. We saw um, I identified Petrarca a couple of weeks ago at 600K as someone that is a potentially good buy. Um, he's now gone to a point where he's unattainable um, for a, at least you know three or four weeks. So... I think keep or keep picking those guys off, and then when you've got one or two spots left in your team, enough trades to to sort of play around with. You can see your cash gen. You might need to make four trades on your last upgrade, um, but you got the you got the ability to do it. That's when you want to just go and get a big heavy hitter. Um, and I, I just think the best way to make money is by just continuing to find the value in the game um, instead of just paying up, paying up, paying up, and and you know getting the guys who you think are going to be unattainable, but actually just keep hovering, um, that sort of thing. So Matt Kennedy, 347K. What is, it, what is he scored? I, haven't seen. <laughs> I mean, he was the sub. Um, round seven and eight, he scored 25 and 36. And last week, playing full game, scored 89. Last year, obviously, he went, what was it, 90 plus? Um, yeah, yeah. But does he even have the role this year? Like I know no, he, he had, won't. They've got a million yeah. midfielders. They've got a million midfielders. He had one good game. It's 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 one of those ones that it's just a massive risk, and you could make a hundred k from it, um, but also he might make ten k, and then you're stuck with Matt Kennedy inside, and then it's bad. 
I do so. think people wanted us to discuss a little bit about DPP changes, but I think it's literally just Walsh. Like, McRae might get it. Um, McRae probably will get it, but I don't think Not he's really. really an option at the moment. Um, but Walsh is, like, the main guy that if he gets it, then well, that's you're, you're, you're looking to get him in. Short as well is incredible, but I think most people have at least four or five defenders without a Dawson slash Stewart. Yeah. So I think I think a lot of people are going to find it tough to get him. And the defenders aren't really like super sidewaysable guys. Like a lot of them have actually just been really solid. I know Sinclair scored bad this week. It's easy to look at him and go, oh, I'd happily sideways him. But generally speaking, he's scoring 100 plus every week and is impossible to trade. So um, sure, I think he's a great, great option. I think he's even purchasable early because um, he's just guaranteed the defensive status. But in my opinion, is he better than Sicily? He's probably on par with Sicily, maybe a little bit better. Is he better than Dawson or Stewart or someone like that? Not at all. Jack Zebel, no. Like it, it's he's still sort of he's not like unbelievable. Got to get him now, and he's not even value anymore. Fair enough. So I think people that were probably looking at Matt Kennedy, maybe you just wait a week and look at Fife at like 230K. Yeah, he will be cheap. He will be very cheap. Like if you want to do that play, I think Fife is more likely to make you 100K rather than Kennedy making you 100K. Well, I think Fife will be sub still this week. Yeah, And then probably. in two weeks' time, he's probably like put, put together a score or two where it's like, oh, wow, okay. He looks good in the midfield. Yeah, very so I think he, I think he plays there, so it's, it, it, sh- it will be good eventually. Yeah, he's firmly on my radar for Cowan. <laughs> Imagine saying you traded Cowan for five. <laughs> uh, I mean, I got rid of Cowan, but um, each to their own, I guess. All right, that's going to do me, Pistol. Um, do you have any closing comments, statements? Um, not really. Just I guess make like the Geelong Gold Coast. Bye. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, nice. Something well, good, I'm going to leave that in. Yeah. Um, I do apologize if I've been clearing my throat or coughing. I've been trying to mute for all of that, but I'm still carrying a little bit of a cold from last week. Um, so apologies there. But I do appreciate you jumping on with me as usual, Pistol. Um, I will do a captain's video this week again and apologize for last week, which was heavily English over Bontepelli, which didn't work out. I hope Cox is in your the- video. Sorry? Never mind, I just heard what I said. I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, All right, well, thank you everyone for listening and we'll catch you next week.